the last man to walk on the moon, Eugene Cernan, stares at the camera with glossy eyes from within his spacecraft. The Apollo 17 astronaut spacesuit and the helmet to his right are filthy. His face is black. But what appears at first glance to be benign dirt betrays a dark secret. The astronaut in this photograph is contaminated with radioactive particles that may induce genetic mutations or even cell death. He is contaminated with moon dust. Before NASA invested in lunar exploration, the scientific community had little to no data on the long-term physiological effects of landing on the moon and remaining there for prolonged intervals. Even now, as returning to the moon for eventual colonization is considered, empirical knowledge of the implications that a lunar residency may have on the body is scarce. Numerous potential dangers have been uncovered. If the moon were colonized, galactic cosmic rays would bombard inhabitants with a steady stream of high-energy radiation. The low gravitational pull of the moon, which has approximately 17% of the Earth's strength, would affect bone and muscle mass, possibly resulting in atrophy and bone loss. The most intriguing and potentially harmful element, however, may be moon dust. The Apollo astronauts who walked on the lunar surface between 1969 and 1972 kicked up a lot of the stuff. It was so rampant on the moon that the powdery sediment lodged into every crease and cranny of their spacesuits. With no knowledge of the risk involved, these astronauts unwittingly brought copious amounts of moon dust into their spacecraft, their close quarters, and eventually back down to Earth upon landing. It's well documented that lunar spacecraft returned to Earth with its interiors filled with dust. Astronauts who walked on the moon and kicked up all that lunar dust, would later complain of what they called lunar hay fever. It was an allergy-like condition that irritated the eyes, lungs, and nostrils. Even the doctor who helped the Apollo 11 crew out of their dust-scattered space module experienced allergic reactions of his own. While they did experience intense respiratory problems, none of the Apollo astronauts suffered any long-term health effects from exposure to moon dust. It must be noted, however, their visits to our satellite were swift missions. The astronauts of the Apollo 17 mission had the longest stay, a mere 75 hours. That could be considered the equivalent of a long weekend. Additionally, this only provides scientists and doctors with 12 subjects, all in prime medical and physical condition at the time of departure. As Kim Prisk, a pulmonary physiologist at the University of California, San Diego says, quote, is this just a nuisance dust or something potentially very toxic? We just don't know, and therein lies the current conundrum. Eugene Cernan visited our lunar neighbor on two occasions, aboard the Apollo 10 and Apollo 17 missions. Apollo 10 was the last one to go up before the famous Apollo 11 mission in July 1969 that landed the first man on the moon. Cernan also did a challenging spacewalk aboard Gemini 9. It was Cernan who called lunar dust, quote, probably one of our greatest inhibitors to a nominal operation on the moon. He went on to add, I think we can overcome other physiological or physical or mechanical problems, except dust. Cernan made this statement at a post-mission debriefing following his Apollo 17 mission and days after he'd walked on the moon, probably creating a dust cloud wherever he walked. Taking another look at Cernan's tainted face in the photo, one inevitably notices how tired he seems. The sizable bags under his eyes, the glossiness of his eyeballs, even his expression, all hint at the exhaustion and allergy-like symptoms induced by moon dust. It's possible that Cernan was having his own bout of lunar hay fever at the time this photo was snapped. The exact level of toxicity that moon dust has on humans and the precise long-term effects of it remain unknown. 
scientists and the general population continue to engage incessantly with the dream of human settlements on the moon. With scant solid evidence regarding the health consequences of living outside the Earth, the community must rely on theories, partial data, and studies that recreate or imitate particular elements of space exploration. As Lawrence Young, a space medicine scientist at MIT's Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics, reminds us regarding health-related data from the moon, quote, except for the Apollo experience, we really have no data. Additionally, she has stressed that the Apollo missions to the moon were never designed with biomedical research in mind. Furthermore, moon dust samples collected by the Apollo astronauts are scarce. And, as with the dust lodged into spacecrafts and suits, those samples became relatively useless for their purpose in scientific analysis after coming into contact with Earth's moist, oxygen-rich air. Even the International Space Station provides little insight as to what it would be like to live on the moon. While it counts as having nearly zero gravity on board, the station orbits within the protective dome of the Earth's magnetic field. The scenario differs from that of the moon, where only partial gravity and higher radiation levels rule the terrain. As for imitations of moon dust, a team at Stony Brook University utilized samples resembling the superficial deposits of high-altitude lunar surfaces and tested their effects on human lung cells and rodent brain cells. Results suggested a high risk of genetic mutations in cell death. This raises questions about prolonged exposure to the real thing on a complete physiological being within a far less controlled environment. Could potential lunar residents face high rates of cancer and neurological degeneration? With no way of currently testing and proving these possibilities with absolute certainty, the true and full effects of moon dust remain to be seen. NASA's Bioengineering Branch and BEAST Laboratory, or Biomedical Engineering for Exploration Space Technology Lab, are working on developing tools that will eventually enable humans to inhabit the moon, Mars, and other regions of outer space. However, as moon dust has proven, they're working with limited data. In the name of science, exploration, and conquest, future lunar missions and civilian space travel will undoubtedly proceed with an array of open medical questions and incomplete health procedures.